Hi, this is Austin with One Wheel Parts and today I'm going to be showing you how to completely disassemble a One Wheel XR. The tools needed are going to be an 8th inch allen key, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a quarter inch allen key. Optionally, you can use a flat head screwdriver as well. So the first thing that we're going to need to remove are going to be either your flight fins or fender with 8 screws located in these 4 sections. If you don't ride with any flight fins or a fender, still go ahead and remove the two screws on each of that front and back foot pad. Then we can go ahead and remove the front bumper and front foot pad. There's going to be six screws located on the bottom here. The two at the front are going to be for the foot pad, and then on the opposite side towards the front, once we've lifted up that foot pad, there are going to be two screws on the top as well. Once you've removed those two screws securing the foot pad, be sure to hold on to it, especially when you flip it over to remove the two on the top. You don't want that foot pad flopping around and putting strain and damage on that cable. Alright, now that we've gotten all the screws off of the bumper, we can go ahead and just slide it off. And now we're actually going to remove the front foot pad. So there is a little plastic shield here that protects those internal components from water. Just go ahead and give it a push down and pull it out of the bottom. And then once we've done that, we can focus on these two cables. Now we can focus on these two cables. The one is going to be for the foot pad and one is going to be for the motor. To get these off, there is going to be a little ring right there that you can twist counterclockwise to loosen up. It does sort of lock in place when it's fully tightened, so once you've broken that little seal, you can go ahead, unscrew it all the way, and just pull it right out. The other two cables are going to be a bit trickier. Those are going to be for your motor as well as for your battery to secure power to it. These, they do have a plastic tab right here that we're going to have to push out before we can actually unplug those. I find it's easiest to use a flathead screwdriver to push and nudge these out, unlocking them. Once we've got those tabs out, there is going to be a black piece that we're going to have to press down. This unlocks the cable from the port. There's a little piece of plastic on the port that sticks up that this cable locks into. We just have to push that down right there and then we will be able to unplug it. A lot of the times these are very difficult to unplug. There's not a lot of tolerance so they get really stuck. Just go ahead. I find it's easiest to take a flathead screwdriver and sort of pry out on the edges while pushing down on the unlock and sort of loosen it up a little. Once we've gotten that off of the hook, we can just go ahead and unplug it. Same thing for the battery controller as with the motor. The battery controller can be a little bit trickier just because it's bigger. You may have to loosen up a little bit more on the sides. If you're wanting to remove your controller, now is going to be the time. Underneath those two warranty void if removed stickers are going to be two screws that we're going to need to unscrew for the controller. It's just sort of slide it out on each side of the rails. Sometimes it can get a bit stuck because of these plastic adhesives right here that say warranty void if removed. Sometimes those can really get stuck on the rail. Here's another shot of me pushing it out. The motor is removed on this one just because of the natural progression of this video, but you do not have to remove the motor in order to remove your controller. You can leave it on there. 
If it's especially stuck, what I find is easy is to loosen up the hub bolts on the motor a little bit. That way it slides out a little bit easier and it has more clearance with the rails. Now we can move on to removing the motor. The first thing we're going to do before we remove the motor at all is there's going to be some cable shields with these Phillips head screws located on both sides of the rails. We're just going to need to unscrew all of those. Also good to note, before you remove your motor, please make sure everything is unplugged from the controller. Now we can get on to loosening the four hub bolts for the motor. They're going to be right there in front of it on the rail. This is where we're going to need to use our quarter inch allen key. Sometimes they are really really tightened down, so don't be afraid to really hammer it on down there. Just be sure not to strip the screw heads. Now we want to remove one set of those screws first. As you see here, the rail just sort of dropped down as soon as that last screw was unplugged. Go ahead and hold that rail up and remove the cable shield. That way it doesn't put extra strain on the bolts on the other side when you unscrew those. Otherwise your controller might just fall, it could pull or damage a cable, or it could even bend the threads on the other side if you just let it free hang. So now that we've gotten everything off, what I find is easiest is to just lift it out from the top and your motor's all the way off. You can perform a tire change, a bearing change, or anything like that once you've done this. Now we can go ahead and get on to removing the back bumper and the back foot pad. You can do this before you've removed the motor as well. This can be done while the motor is still on. It's just going to be the same six screws on the bottom and two on the top for the bumper and foot pad as the front was. Also to note, the back bumper doesn't really slide out, it just sort of falls off the bottom. I did slide it out there, but there aren't any lips or anything like that to secure it on there. Now we can get on to removing the battery. It's going to be the same thing as the controller, just those two screws under the warranty void if removed, and we just slide it out as normal. Now we can get on to removing the rails. If you need to gain access to the battery and the controller at the same time, or just gain access to your rails without anything attached to them, this is much easier than removing the battery and the controller separately. We just go ahead and remove the four warranty void if removed screws, and then we can just pull the rails right off of them. And that's all there is to it. This has been how to disassemble a one wheel XR completely for each of the individual components, whether you need to access them to do a repair or a touch up or anything like that. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. As always, there will be a link in the description to all the tools and products that we use down in this video. And be sure to head over to One Wheel Parts for all your one wheel accessory needs.